the most important piece that you can have in your brain when you start to build your own golf swing is that your brain is going to respond to muscle tension signals and you need to feed your brain in the correct order in order to get it to fire in the correct order. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a drill that's going to help you wake your body up because I look at the golf swing as three very specific systems that we have to have in place in order to be able to play good golf. The first system is going to be your body. Your body is the main system. This is your engine to the golf swing. The second system is your arms. Your arms play a vital role with helping you establish hand and arm path, where the hands and arms are at the top of the swing, swing plane. And then the third and final system is going to be your wrist. Each one of those systems plays a vital role in the golf swing and can either set you up for success or make your golf swing a catastrophe. Today, I know a lot of you at home really struggle with the main system of movements. You struggle using your legs and your core like you should in the golf swing. Now the beauty of this drill is that you're gonna be able to use it on the drive range before you warm up. You can use it during a practice session and you can use it before you go out to the golf course to make sure that you're not gonna go out there and just fire the hands and the arms. You need to use your body as an engine. And if you get yourself connected to the legs and the core, you're gonna be a whole lot more successful. Okay, so I want you to remember this drill is not to be done where you have smoke coming out of your ears and your tongue coming out of your mouth. This is a drill that's designed to teach you how to wake up your body, okay? So I'm gonna give you a lot of details that go into this drill, but I want you to remember that we're trying to do this in fluidity. You get it? Okay, good. Now, first step that we're gonna do here, and I like to do this drill with my driver because it's my longest club in my bag, and we're gonna set this club across our chest here in a minute, but I like to start from more or less like a delivery position and I like to work from a delivery position all the way to my finish. Now, we understand that at impact, our hips are gonna be open somewhere between 35 to 45 degrees, and our shoulders are gonna be nice and square. Now, the body doesn't fully stop its movement when the hands and arms are going in front. The shoulders and the spine continue to react to the hands and arms releasing independently as the club goes flying past us. So that's what this drill is to, designed to help you do it's designed to help you feel what the body should be doing to get to finish. Now, our focus is going to be on our trail foot and our core. Our trail foot and our core. What your trail foot is going to be doing is it's going to be rolling to the inside portion. And as you start to turn your body and try to get to a finish position, it's going to move up onto the big toe, eventually getting all the way up onto the big toe to where the heel or your sole of your shoe is facing the crowd behind you. Now, what I want you to remember is, is your trail foot acts as a break in your golf swing. You will see a lot of players with their heel fully down on the ground at impact, but you will see a lot of players with their heel up off the ground. But if you watch it very closely as the hands and arms are passing in front, and as the release is getting fully done, it stays very quiet until the release of the speed is all gone. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and take your setup position, grab your driver, and I want your weight to be directly underneath your ankle joints with just a little bit of knee flex. What you're gonna look for is having just enough knee flex just to soften the knees. I want you to take your club and I want you to cross it across your chest and have the club head off the trail side of your body. I want you to keep your hips nice and square and I want you just to turn your shoulders back about 45 degrees or so. From here, what I want you to do is I want you to roll to the inside portion of your trail foot just like you have your mom's favorite Fabergé egg underneath the outside portion of it. And as you're doing that, I want you to use your obliques to start to rotate the hips back. And I want you to go ahead and keep your head and your chest down as long as you can. And as you start to turn your body and your chest towards the target, I want you to rotate up onto your toe so that your big toe is pointed in the ground and the sole of your shoe is pointed back at the crowd behind you. So it's Roll to the inside portion. Use your obliques to rotate the hip as you continue to allow your chest to turn towards the target while you're trying to keep your head and chest back here, you're gonna walk up onto your toe into a finish position. I know it sounds like a lot, but think about this kind of broken down into some simple steps. Roll, rotate the hips, keep your body turning up onto the toe into finish. So what it's gonna look like, and we're gonna do 20 reps just like this. Okay, take your setup, weight underneath your ankle joints, Okay, proper knee flex. Turn your chest back about 45 degrees. Roll to the inside portion. Rotate the hips back with your obliques. Keep your head and chest still up onto your toe. That's the movement. Every single rep should be done just like that. So we're gonna do 20 reps. We're gonna start pretty slow at first. 
okay? Trying to keep some engagement in my core. A good way to do that is pull your belly button towards your spine, so suck in your gut a little bit. Now, as I start to get reps, I'm gonna start picking up the pace here. Try to keep your head and your chest down here as long as you can. Okay, your body rotation, you're gonna to start to feel your head swivel naturally as you rotate up onto your toe into finish. You wanna make sure that you get up onto the big toe. Do not have a lot of weight and a lot of creasing in your toe box of your trail foot. If you do, then you haven't really gotten off all the weight off of that side, that's bad news. So let's do three or four more. Head and chest stay down, rolling to the inside portion of the foot, using my obliques to rotate the hips back, landing on the toe to finish. That's a lot, right? But do reps and you'll start to see that it becomes a piece of cake. Once you can do that in fluidity, now you're ready to take on step number two. Step number two, this is where we're gonna start warming up the backswing. What we're gonna to try to do here is we're gonna to try to create some good separation between your hips and your shoulders. Now, I get this question all the time. When is the backswing complete? When is my backswing complete and when should I start my downswing? Your backswing is complete when your hips have turned a certain amount and your body turn has turned a certain amount. What we're gonna look for here at My Golf DNA is we want your hips to rotate somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees shut and we want your body turn to be right around 90 degrees. Now, a lot of you at home are much more capable of making a 90 degree shoulder turn than you think. You might not have a 90 degree shoulder turn when you look at it on camera because of where your force of movement comes from. Typically speaking, we'll see a lot of people just overuse their hands and arms and they start loading up their shoulder girdles and that's what starts to shut the body down. Or the other problem is, is that you're just not letting the hips rotate properly. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna start out by rotating the hips slightly just to make sure that they're moving in the right direction. And then we're gonna to try to create some stability in the hips by keeping our flex in our trail leg. And we're gonna make an aggressive body turn with our core by pulling the club head back behind our head. So what, this is gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take our setup again, make sure the weight is on underneath the ankle joints and you have just the proper knee flex. Do not get too squatty down to your knees when you do this. You could potentially hurt yourself. Okay, you wanna have just the back of the knee over the center of the ankle and have your weight underneath your ankle joints. From a static address position, what I want you to do is I just want you to make a small shift onto your trail side and turn your belt buckle and your chest about 20 degrees or so. Now from here, I want you to maintain the flex in your trail leg as much as you can. And I want you to take that club head and pull it behind your head as far as you can, keeping your head quiet. You're going to feel these muscles back here. You're gonna feel your glutes. You're gonna feel your midsection. A lot of you are gonna feel some stretch on the outside portion of your lead side flank here. Those are your big muscles going to work. Now, remember, if you watched the Ludwig Oberg video, you saw that a lot of playing professionals will have their hips not really doing a whole lot by the time the lead arm is parallel to the ground. By maintaining some flex after you get that hip rotated properly to start the golf swing, that's gonna help create stability in the hips and make sure that your hips aren't over-rotating. There's a lot of golf instruction out there that teaches you to rotate your hips way too much and that forces a lot of recovery. And a lot of that recovery comes from you having to be really rotational on the way through and that can put a lot of stress on your lower vertebrae and we just don't want you to hurt your back. Now, how this is gonna work, we're gonna do 20 reps the same way. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we've got our weight underneath our ankle joints. We've got the proper knee flex little pressure shift, turn your belt buckle. Okay, keep your head quiet. Pull the club head behind your head. Keep that trail leg flexed and facing forward. Step number two complete. Now, let's bring it all together. You've done the reps to warm up from delivery to finish. You've done the reps loading up the backswing. Now, it's time to start making the full kit and caboodle come to life here. Now, your job is when you start to get that club head back behind your head here in step number three. 
That's when I want you to start feeling like your weight roll, rotates to the inside portion of your trail foot. Now, remember what I said in the opener. This drill is not designed to have a lot of technical thinking. If you are running into problems where you're not getting into a good impact position or you're not opening up your hips enough, then I would suggest that you stop doing what you're doing and go back two videos ago and watch how I trained you how to use your feet in the golf swing to be able to move properly from one side of the body to the other. If you are pretty buttoned up on that stuff and you're just ready to start adding speed to the mix, then you could continue on the drill. So the focus points are in step number three is from a static address position, we're gonna go pressure shift, big turn, and as that turn starts to complete, we're gonna roll to the inside portion of the trail foot and we're going right to finish. Now, when you study the golf swing, we know that when you look at the best players in the world, both men and women, we know that there's a three to one ratio for most people. That doesn't mean that it's ironclad, but that means that the backswing takes three times as long as the downswing. So I want you to kind of keep that visual in your brain. Think about a good solid loading practice, but be aggressive as you're moving to finish. So what this is gonna look like now, we're gonna go ahead and take our setup. Remember, it's little small pressure shift onto the trail side, turn, and then you're gonna pull the club head back. As the club head gets back there, you're rotating into the inside portion of that trail foot, using your obliques to rotate the hip back all the way to finish. Keep your head and your chest down here as long as you possibly can. And we're gonna do another 15 to 20 reps or so just like this, and we're gonna be all warmed up. And now we're ready to head to the golf course or we're ready to start our practice session. Okay, so here we go. Little pressure shift. So as soon as I feel that club head get back behind my head, I'm trying to get my weight to the inside portion of my trail foot. I'm rotating my hips back and I'm thinking about getting to finish. Stay in movement. Don't be technically minded. Okay. So now you should feel your legs, you should feel your core, and your body should feel warmed up. Now you're ready to start picking up the golf club and you're ready to start swinging away. Remember, your job is to use the system. You need to use your legs and your core if you wanna be productive in the golf swing. Follow this drill. Do this every single day that you go out there and start hitting golf balls and it'll start making your practice sessions a whole lot easier to manage. If you're working on system number two and you're focusing on a hand and arm function, Yes, you obviously want to tie that back into some slower movement, but as you start trying to tie some fluidity to it, then think about what you just did in this drill as you start to make practice swings and you start hitting golf balls. And I guarantee it, you're going to feel what it's like to make real effortless power and real effortless speed once and for all. Let's get out there. Let's play some good golf. Good luck. Have a great day.